Right, dead. So well, you need a USB stick. Our best is uh, actually two of them and make him, I don't know, four gig size uh, would probably do. Maybe make it eight gig. And uh, you also need to have set up your MetaMask. Yeah, we all know and love it. And you have to have your 32 ETH in there. Right, let's look at hardware for one minute. This is the Raspberry Pi. It costs $35 in the smallest uh, specs, I suppose, and it's tiny. And people are staking with this, apparently. Uh, you can choose up to 8 gigs of RAM. That should suffice. And uh, off you go. That's all you need. Uh, but the slight trouble with this is uh, currently it's not available because of all the problems with the supply chain. Um, anyway, I went and bought a duck. Uh, that's uh, much more pricey. I put in memory, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, two of these, and then as a hard disk, uh, this. It definitely needs to be an SSD. It can't be a spinning disk. That's apparently too, too uh, slow. Right, so if you've got anything in between these uh, specs, but it has to be an SSD, so don't go with a spinning disk, then uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can stake. Let's have a quick look at the software. So go to ethereum.org and here's just a whole lot of uh, information, uh, which is really interesting and good to read through. So uh, have a little browse. I know you had already, but uh, never, there's definitely, there's so much on there. You never, I've read everything basically, but we want to go to um, Stake ETH. And here it explains why we, um, uh, should stake ETH and uh, how. So there are basically four different ways. Solo home staking, that's what I'm gonna tell you today, uh, how to do it. Uh, then, so that's basically with your own machine at home, with your own internet connection. So that is sort of the best and most native way to support the network. Staking as a service, these are services like all nodes and others where you then uh, provide your key to them and they stake on your behalf so you don't have to do any of the hardware setup um, but you give yeah yeah it's, it's still a third party in there pool staking is like rocket pool and uh, lido i think the biggest so there you get a token it's, so you give them your eth you get back a token and then you can deal with that token otherwise uh, so that's quite quite handy because you still have something to to yield farm with or to do other things with. And centralized exchanges is um, like Kraken or Coinbase where you just, um, you stake on there. But that is, uh, that's also very easy. But then there's this big, big centralized entity in the system, which we don't want. So let's go uh, solo staking. Here it uh, explains a little bit what that is. We know that and here lots of considerations. I think we've been through this, but make sure to have another read here uh, that you're comfortable with all this. And then it shows you how it all works. We're gonna get into that in a minute. Uh, you can do a testnet first of all, which I would recommend as well. And then it comes down to all these different uh, ways of, of staking here. And sort of a little bit of a, a summary of what I think ethereum.org think Oh, how they sort of uh, audited them. Uh, and that note doesn't seem to come away very, very well, but I'm not quite sure if this is actually all, uh, all correct. Multi-client will soon be multi-client. Uh, what that means, I'll tell you later, if I don't forget. And well, let's, uh, let's just get cracking. <laughs> 